it's not all roses, however, when it comes to the business of growing coffee. Let's explore what effect climate change, for one, is having on coffee production within the East African region. Gladys Musomtai is part of the 2019-2020 class of New Einstein Fellows. Uh, she joins us now live on the program. Um, Gladys, good to have you on the program tonight. Walk us through what we know about how changes in temperature and rainfall will essentially affect coffee output among the key producers in East Africa, Uganda, Tanzania, Kenya, and Ethiopia. Thank you so much for having me today. Uh, well, I have been working on coffee for the past uh, four years uh, on, as my PhD work. And uh, I've been looking on impact of the landscape setup and landscape ecology for that matter and how the different way we're using our landscape are influencing pest and disease for that matter. But beyond that is that coffee is of course the main uh, focus of my research and coffee is a very climate sensitive crop. You know, uh, it grows within specific uh, zones and temperature ranges that anything beyond that or below that will affect the coffee production. For instance, Arabica coffee, which is a dominant variety that we grow in here in most of the East African countries, is that it is very specific to temperature. And for instance, it grows between 18 degrees to 23 degrees. Anything beyond 23 degrees, you would find that it will affect the production of uh, you know, the, the berries. And for most part, it will either quicken the ripening of the berries, and for that matter, it will reduce the cup quality such that when we go on an international market, we're not able to get a very good market for that. Uh, for sometimes it will also cause, uh, you know, the leaves to shade. And of course that has an impact in terms of photosynthesis that the plant need. And if the temperatures go be below that, it will cause, uh, you know, to cause stunted growth. And we might not even have anything to see at the end. So on the other side, in terms of rainfall, for instance, also it is very specific to rainfall and even rainfall pattern. See, for coffee, it needs, there's, you know, the different stages from the flowering to the, the green berries becoming, you know, until it gets to the cherry where it's red. Uh, before the flowering happens, there's a time when we need to have a dry season, a, a small spell of dry season, which is about three months. And that will trigger the flowering. And when we have a good flower, then, you know, so in the case where we have erratic rainfall and we know that rains are you don't know when it is coming we no longer have specific seasons like before then you know the coffee tree is a bit the physiology of the tree is confused so when it's supposed to be having a dry spell it's raining so when we have for instance uh you know heavy rainfall during the throughout the year then we might be having crops you know coming in up there and that reduces the amount of the you know amount the farmer can get at the end of the day so, so it, you know, does, coffee, it does sound fairly dismal when we're talking about all the erratic changes in weather i mean to, to some extent i'm sure the people who are watching this right now and they're asking is, is there even a future for coffee production in east africa in the next 10 or 20 years well, you know, with the climate change and everything that's right now we're all facing, you know, uh, it is about, you can say it looks a bit gloomy because we don't know how far this, you know, the climate is going. But, you know, farmers have to find ways around it on how to mitigate themselves from this. And as we see a lot of projections from, you know, IPCC showing us, you know, we're expecting, uh, you know, temperatures to rise. So far by now, I think we are about at 0 0.98% uh, mean global mean temperature rise. And even by that fact alone, we have seen, you know, a lot of impact has happened. The range now for where coffee used to be suitable, we're finding it moving up the, you know, elevation to a warmer site. And so you see now there's this competition between the different um, crop types now for tea because uh, for most a lot of you will find tea has on the higher elevation and then followed by coffee as you go to the maize and so forth. So right now we will see a lot of farmers will move up and you know tea will even encroach more to the forest and so forth. So of course will farmers will tend to do whatever they have to do to get what food they have and put a food on the table and that might mean they might have to encroach forests so that you know they get a better suitable condition for that 
and even on other than just the ecology of the, the suitability, the land that will be suitable for coffee, we have this other side on pests and diseases that is also becoming very rampant and complicated and a complex system itself for farmers and looking to most coffee producers in Kenya, you know, most of them are smallholder farmers who are actually growing coffee in less than two hectares. And those farmers really don't have the energy, they don't have the resources that they need to control pests and diseases. So with the climate change, we also expect that uh, the the different pests will will be more, uh, will have more proliferation. Uh, you, the, the, the cycle that is needed for pests to move from one stage to the other with favorable conditions, that means their life cycle will go fast. Right. And so, of course, you know, farmers have this other nightmare that they have to work around, which is the pests and diseases that it is becoming a threat to them as well. All right, so let's let's so, well, let's yeah. let's tie this together then. So rainfall patterns are changing, temperatures are going up, and as you pointed out, yeah. based on also the data you're seeing in your research, um, we're also seeing an increasing threat coming through from pests. But a yeah. lot of the coffee we produce in this part of the world is grown by smallholder farmers. What do we need Absolutely. to do to support them to make sure that they have a viable crop at least over the next 10, 20 years? We have to really have to think uh, just beyond, uh, you know, just getting your product out of the farm. Because for now, as my part of my work specifically, I'm looking at the landscape ecology. And this is basically how, you know, the setup of the landscape, what do we composition, forest, you know, how far is your, 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 your coffee plot to a forest. Uh, and, you know, farmers, uh, coffee is grown majorly around three systems. So we have farmers who grow coffee, you know, alone, like open field. There's nothing in between there. And you'll finally mostly in larger state as well, where you just have one, you know, space of coffee that is only the same thing. Then we have farmers who are adopting now the Climate Smart, which is a coffee uh, agroforest system. Uh, in its native uh, learned coffee grows as an agro for, and as an understory crop, which means uh, it grows below, you know, trees and so forth. So we, that is one way that you know other farmers are adopting, and that's actually where people are heading to. And then you also have what we have in most of our African setups, where coffee, you know, is intermixed. We have maize in there, you have beans, you have, you know, uh, you have kills. So it is an inter, it's a, you know intercropped system and with that of course comes with all this uh, side effect especially in an intercrop system where we have competition you want to apply a fertilizer for coffee but then you have maize so you know the yields will tend to go lower uh, as compared to somebody who's really focusing on extensively on coffee alone but then this system um, produce gives us an opportunity really to want to understand this farming systems and of course whatever we do on our land has a, a ripple effect at a contiguous landscape and so uh, for now we have to really come to think about how we want to do our planning a land use planning system such that we have a system where we can have uh, we can grow coffee in a place where we're able to conserve our environment at the same time you know and other than just having pests alone, we have the ones we call the natural the natural enemies of this pest, and those are the ones the biological control very much right. of you know pests and diseases. And you see now the more we clear our land and and do away with the natural uh, vegetations, the more we do away with the natural pest, which could have helped us. So we really have to think around those places, and this would mean not just the farmers alone, but we need the government in to come in and help us in how do we plan our landscape in this case to get the best out of it where we can get good product and at the same time we're having you know other ecosystem services that would be beneficial to us.